Welcome back to Facts Not Fear at noon. Here's another look at the latest coronavirus numbers from Georgia's Department of Public Health. 4,638 confirmed cases, 952 people hospitalized, and 138 deaths. Fulton County still leading the pack. We know you have a lot of questions about the information you're seeing and hearing. 11 Alive medical correspondent Dr. Sujatha Reddy is back, helping us give you the facts, not fear about COVID-19. Let us know if you have a question by texting 404-885-7600. All right, Dr. Reddy, are you ready? I'm ready, Shiva. I'm not even going to mention that we're wearing the same color again, but you know, <laughs> whatever. All right, let's start with Christine. She wants to know what's the difference in symptoms for pneumonia versus COVID-19? Yeah, great question. And I think that really highlights why this is such a serious virus. Usually when someone gets pneumonia, it's one part of the lung that gets the infection. That's what pneumonia is. It's an irritation infection of the lung tissue. What we're seeing with these COVID-19 patients is the lung infection, what's happening, the inflammation to the lungs is actually all over the lungs. So it's in multiple places, which is why it's so serious. And I think also why it's creating symptoms quickly. So the pneumonia that we're seeing with COVID-19 is more widespread in the lungs than what we consider mm -hmm. traditional pneumonia. So is pneumonia a symptom of COVID-19? It's really the complication of COVID-19 that's okay. causing people to be on ventilators. It's a complication of the viral infection. All right, Michelle asks, when are people the most contagious? Yeah, great question. You're the most contagious when you have symptoms, but we also know that before someone has symptoms, they are contagious. That we're terming that the asymptomatic spread. So before they even realize they're sick, they have the virus in their secretions and they can't pass it on. But most contagious is gonna be when you have symptoms. Okay, all right, and David writes in, my father is 56, has had pneumonia twice in the past. Is he at high risk? And I'm gonna to have to hedge a little bit. I'm gonna say possibly, because if there's a lung problem or something that's made him prone to pneumonia, then yes, I would say he would be considered higher risk. KT wants to know, are transplant patients considered medically fragile? Yes, transplant patients have to often be on a drug that suppresses their immune system so they don't reject or attack the transplanted new organ they have. And that immunosuppressant medication would put you at higher risk. Kelly wants to know if labs go back to test January and February samples that were negative for flu, can or will the patient be told when their sample tests positive for COVID-19? Yeah, that's an interesting question. So you're wondering if you were sick earlier, possibly was it that you had COVID-19? And the answer is maybe, but yeah. the samples, the tests that you do for flu are specifically looking for flu. Mm. They're not gonna be able to go back and use that same swab to now check for COVID-19. And most people aren't gonna keep those specimens for this long. So I don't think we'll ever have that answer. I've heard about this possibly happening, happening for folks who have passed away already. Any truth to that? People that they know passed you know, away think, due to the flu, and then they later found out COVID-19 had some, had a role in it as well. If they're able to do tests on the person, maybe, but you know, I'm not. I, I just don't have an answer. Like how far back they'd be willing to go and look at those tissues. I have to say the symptoms are a little bit different with COVID-19. They come on faster. The lungs get affected more globally as opposed to one section, like I mentioned. So it's a little bit different. Okay, and Janie says, are the symptoms of COVID-19 different or longer lasting in children than adults? Yeah, another really good question. We really feel children are getting milder um, cases, but what, you know, what we did think in kids is they get more of the GI problems, like they may get really, like just temporarily or very subtle, looser um, poops, things like that, more diarrhea, more GI upset than adults, but their symptoms seem to be much milder in kids. All right, let's not forget, we've already had uh, a couple of kids pass away as well, a couple of teenagers and a newborn, possibly. They're trying to see if COVID-19 is related. George wants to know, is antibacterial soap my best bet for a thorough hand washing? 
Another really good question. I think we can't, you know, underscore social distancing and hand washing are the keys for us beating this. But hand washing is going to be very important to do it for the proper amount of time. Get all the areas, your thumbs in between your fingers. And soap is key. The temperature of the water really doesn't matter as long as it's comfortable for you to do the 20 seconds. It doesn't have to say antibacterial. This was actually a little bit of a controversy mm. um, a while back. Any soap is going to be fine. If you have antibacterial, great, but it doesn't have to be. Any soap is going to, to work to get rid of the virus. And Steve asks, is it okay for me to donate blood and are blood banks taking extra safety measures? Someone asked this a couple days ago as well. Yeah, and I'm so glad you're asking this because I went and donated blood yesterday and I was, oh, you know, right. they took my temperature while I was there twice. Um, they made sure we were not like, you know, other people that were there, we were, you know, socially distanced six feet apart. Okay. They took a lot of precautions. So I felt very comfortable being there. So it is absolutely necessary and good to do if you can donate to go and donate. Mm -hmm. I felt very comfortable and safe. I didn't feel like I was exposing myself. And we know that giving blood is safe and we know blood is needed. This mm -hmm. is not a blood borne illness. So the blood, you know, is not going to be an issue. But they are taking your temperature twice while you're there. They did a lot of stuff. So if you can, it's a great time to go donate blood. It would be considered safe in my opinion. The person who took your blood, Dr. Reddy, did they wear a mask? You know, they did, I think, because when they were actually doing the pre-testing where they check your finger to see if you're, you know, hemoglobin, and also when they're actually collecting the blood, they are, you know, probably about three to four feet away. Okay. So they were wearing masks. Again, I think they were protected and I felt protected. Okay. Just another reason why? to donate blood because blood is needed right now. It is, and it makes you feel good, right? Because everyone's like, I want to do something, I want to do something, or here's something that you can do. Okay, and it gets you out the house. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, we'll be back to answer more of your coronavirus questions with Dr. Reddy in just a few moments. Stick around.